there seems to be a significant growth in cycling in South Africa. This made me ask myself, what is the story of the bicycle in South Africa? And how does it fit in the fabric of our society? So to answer these questions, I thought we should take a tour back in time. Oh, sorry, I mean way back. Bicycles marked the arrival of an emerging modernism in colonial South Africa. In 1870, a Peter Maritzburg merchant imported several extraordinary locomotives that we now call bicycles. These locomotives could only be made accessible to few white and elite and quickly became popular consumer goods for the wealthy to tour around on and use for sport. However, this exclusivity didn't last very long. In the 1900s economic boom, the growth of the middle class meant new consumer goods like the bicycle were now more affordable. Now, missionaries, lamp lighters, and rural farmers also took up pedaling to work and for leisure. And as time went, the native African people started to be seen riding these extraordinary locomotives, especially those who worked on mines which had dense areas, playing fields, and first-class cycling. But the freedom the bicycle gave black people wasn't always welcome. Allegations that natives stole bicycles and rode them dangerously were used frequent. But things changed after the arrival of the car. By the 1930s, white middle class had already abandoned the bike for the car. Because of high cost, car ownership was negligible among black South Africans and lack of public transport meant cycling grew fast among black working-class South Africans. Therefore, places like Johannesburg became true cycling cities as black miners, carpenters, delivery men, and other workers took to two wheels to get around. Unfortunately, in 1948, policies of spatial segregation forcibly moved black people from city centers to distant townships. The distance between work and home was now dramatically longer and cycling collapsed as an everyday practice. Throughout the 1990s, general cycling was almost entirely absent. Cyclists were more or less never seen on traditional transport roads. Many years after the end of apartheid, these spatial and economical inequalities remain entrenched in the cities and continue to shape how people get around. As a consequence, the National Coronavirus Command Council has decided to enforce a nationwide lockdown I think it's a filter. It, in the... it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live. It's not, I'm not a cat. Across the world, the COVID-19 pandemic had not only forced people to change how they work and interact with each other, but also how they move means of collective transport was used much less and cycling became a reasonable option with a small risk of contagiousness. Though COVID-19 lockdown period was tough, it also revived the cycling culture. Since then, the culture of cycling has grown at a very fast pace. The roads that have been mostly dominated by cars for many years are slowly changing form. New biking subcultures have emerged and these riders are repurposing the streets. 
they are using these spaces to express their individuality, freedom and prowess. It's clear, throughout the years, the bicycle has shown to offer more than just mobility. It also offered connection, freedom and access to social and economic opportunities. The story of the bicycle in South Africa continues and this chapter is young, creative, entrepreneurial and brave. Experience it with us here at Africa in Agupenda. Keep riding. <laughs>